Welcome to this video where we'll be discussing how to check if a stock is undervalued or overvalued. As an investor, it's crucial to understand the value of a stock to make informed decisions about buying or selling. In this video, we'll explore several methods to determine if a stock is over or undervalued, and we'll look at some examples to illustrate these methods. Method 1. Price to Earnings Ratio P -E -ratio. The first method we'll discuss is the Price to Earnings Ratio P -E -ratio. It's one of the most commonly used metrics to evaluate the value of a stock. P-E ratio is calculated by dividing a stock's market price by its earnings per share, EPS. The formula for calculating P-E ratio is P-E ratio equals market price per share, earnings per share, EPS. For example, if a stock is trading at $50 per share, and its EPS is $5, then its P-E ratio would be 10, 50 fifths. Generally, a higher P-E ratio suggests that a stock is overvalued, while a lower P-E ratio may indicate that a stock is undervalued. However, this may vary depending on the industry and market conditions. A general rule of thumb for P-E ratios is that a ratio below 15 is considered undervalued, a ratio between 15 and 20 is considered fairly valued, and a ratio above 20 is considered overvalued. Method 2. Price to Sales Ratio P-S Ratio Another useful method for determining the value of a stock is the price to sales ratio (PS ratio). This ratio is calculated by dividing a company's market capitalization by its revenue over the past 12 months. The formula for calculating PS ratio is PS ratio equals market capitalization revenue. For example, if a company has a market capitalization of $1 billion and revenue of $500 million, then its PS ratio would be 2 1 billion, 500 million. Similar to P-E ratio, a lower P-S ratio may indicate that a stock is undervalued, while a higher P-S ratio suggests that a stock may be overvalued. A rule of thumb for the P-S ratio is to look for companies with a ratio below 1, as this may suggest that the stock is undervalued. However, as with any valuation metric, it is important to consider other factors such as the company's financial health, growth potential, and industry trends before making an investment decision. Method 3. Discounted Cash Flow DCF, Analysis The third method we'll discuss is the Discounted Cash Flow DCF, Analysis. This method involves estimating the future cash flows of a company and discounting them to their present value. The formula for DCF analysis is DCF equals CF1 1 plus R carrot 1 plus CF2 1 plus R squared plus plus CFN 1 plus R carrot N. Where CF is the cash flow, R is the discount rate, and N is the number of years. For example, if a company is expected to generate cash flows of $10 million in year 1, $12 million in year 2, and $15 million in year 3, and the discount rate is 8%, then the DCF would be DCF equals $10 million per 1 plus 0 0.08, carat 1, plus, 12 million dollars per, 1 plus 0 0.08, squared, plus, 15 million dollars per, 1 plus 0 0.08, cubed, equals 9.26 million dollars plus 10.22 million dollars plus 11.12 million dollars equals 30.6 million dollars. If the DCF value is higher than the market value of the stock, then it may be considered undervalued. On the other hand, if the DCF value is lower than the market value, it may indicate that the stock is overvalued. Method 4. Price to Book P -B, Ratio The P-B ratio compares a company's stock price to its book value per share. The book value represents the net assets of a company, which is calculated by subtracting liabilities from assets. A lower P-B ratio may indicate that a company is undervalued and has the potential to increase in value. For example, if a stock is trading at $50 per share and has a book value of $10 per share, its P-B ratio would be 5. If another stock is trading at $75 per share and has a book value of $20 per share, its P-B ratio would be 3.75. This means that the second stock is relatively cheaper than the first stock in terms of book value. A general rule of thumb for P-B ratios is that a ratio below 1 is considered undervalued, a ratio between 1 and 3 is considered fairly valued, and a ratio above 3 is considered overvalued. Method 5. Dividend Yield. The dividend yield is the annual dividend payment divided by the current stock price. 
A higher dividend yield may indicate that a stock is undervalued and has the potential to increase in value. For example, if a stock pays an annual dividend of $2 per share and is trading at $50 per share, its dividend yield would be 4%. If another stock pays an annual dividend of $3 per share and is trading at $75 per share, its dividend yield would be 4%. This means that the two stocks have a similar dividend yield, but the first stock is relatively cheaper than the second stock. A general rule of thumb for dividend yields is that a yield above 4% is considered high, a yield between 2% and 4% is considered average, and a yield below 2% is considered low. In conclusion, there are several methods that investors can use to determine if a stock is undervalued or overvalued, including P-E ratio, P-S ratio, DCF analysis, P-B ratio, and dividend yield. It's important to keep in mind that these methods are not foolproof and should be used in conjunction with other metrics and analysis to make informed investment.